Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here for a draft recap of our most recent team for the Pokemon Battling Association League or P-Ball and we're going to build out a really fun team. This is going to be a really difficult draft only because we ended up with the second to last pick in the draft which is always really anxiety inducing because you have a semi wheel, but at the same time, you need to sequence out your mons correctly in order to not get sniped by the person with the final pick because they're going to be able to pick twice before you get to pick again. And uh, it could really kind of mess up a lot of plans for the future. But overall, I think this is going to be a really fun season. I really like the team that I put together here. It's going to have a lot of um, different things going on, but I honestly think I got some of the best deals in the draft. I think some of these mons are going to be just incredibly, incredibly good. And I'm so excited to use a couple mons that I've never been able to use before and a couple of ones that are some of my favorites but uh with that i'm gonna get started with my first pick the high dragon here now i knew being so late in the round that i was gonna have my pick of whatever was left over now obviously i had a lot of hopes for what was gonna be left over and i was really really torn between quite a few things right so i was kind of honestly hoping that rillaboom was gonna make it down to me only because i know that it's a very popular pick but i I honestly thought that um, it was going to be overlooked with just how much new power was coming back with, with Crown Tundra. I kind of thought that people would get kind of sidetracked with a lot of those mons that were coming back, that they would overlook it a little bit. And while it did take a little bit longer than I thought it would to get taken up, uh, it did get taken and I kind of had to find out what I wanted to do here. Now I was really, really torn between Hydreigon and Heatrain here for this spot. Obviously I went with a Hydreigon. Part of me still regrets it i never use heatran in draft but i really do think it would be a ton of fun to use and looking back on things i kind of did panic pick and i am really really happy with hydreigon but i would have loved to kind of had the opportunity to build around a heatran as well but uh here we are with the hydreigon and i'm feeling really really good about how this next couple of sequence of mons is going to go now there are two main things that i really wanted to accomplish before i ever made one pick in the draft I thought that Slowbro is absolutely broken with this new kind of teleporting meta and just how many mons are really really strong right now i really thought that no matter what happens i want to ensure that i get that slow bro because i really do think that slow bro is going to be the key for me to do most of what i want to do with my draft my second kind of plan here is going to come down to my second wheel so with that i'm just going to go out and say that slow bro was my next pick i knew that i wanted slow bro and i really thought that i should have waited for maybe the third or fourth pick but i really thought that this thing is too important for me to pass up even in this number two pick i just really needed that that slow bro i really think that it's going to be incredibly good for what i'm trying to do with it and for the kind of team that i'm trying to build around it i think with this second wheel that's coming i think it's going to be just so so important for the kind of team that i'm trying to build out here i have not really dipped my toe in that much in the teleport meta at all and i really really want to go in this in, in a major way with this slow row pick and now I'm, I'm in another pick so many picks have gone uh after this slow row pick but i end up picking up the skarmory now skarmory is a mod that i've never used before and if you can see a little bit of a pattern here i'm already trying to build around a ground weakness so already i have two immunities and one mon that doesn't really mind physical ground hits that much so i think i'm in a really interesting position to kind of build out the team that i want to but at the same time i just felt that skarmory was a really really interesting tier three pick um obviously it gives me a lot of hazards and i think it's really just strong on its own with being able to body press now i think body press is clearly become one of the most important moves in the game and i just think that in this kind of new teleporting meta and body press meta i think these two mods in particular are going to be fantastic for it but like i said there's a little bit of a theme happening here and i i have a bunch of ground immunities and a bunch of different momentum type things that i'm trying to accomplish here so with that is my fourth pick the Zerka Tree. Now, a lot of people mentioned after I picked it that Zerka Tree lost access to Tail Glow. It lost, obviously, access to Z moves, which was a lot of what made it really, really good. But I, I saw Zerka Tree in Tier 3, and I just thought it was bonkers down there in Tier 3. I still think that this thing has a ton of potential in it. I think it can do so many things, right? So, okay, so let's talk about a, a few of them, right? Obviously, it lost access to Z-Hypnosis, but there is Hypnosis Blunder Policy, right? The, the old kind of Noctowl set. I don't know if I'm ever going to really run that, but I think it's the perfect kind of speed tier for a consistent Scarf set. Now, uh, one thing that I did make sure to note is if it could outspeed things like Dragapult with a Scarf, I did make sure before that I checked out certain things like that because whatever kind of mod that I wanted to pick, that 
could kind of build off of slowbro teleporting i really needed it to hit those kind of speed benchmarks and zergatru just felt so so good and honestly i almost kind of did want to pick up a thunderous therian in this slot as well because it really does a lot of what zergatru does but just a little bit better right it has access to u-turn it has a slightly better um coverage moves this is, uh, this is honestly gonna kind of slot into the same four moves every dang week but when those four moves are this strong and it just has so much hitting potential and again at tier three so it's going to free me up so much to build out a much much stronger team than i probably could with thunderous theory and where i'm going to kind of be struggling for points in this kind of uh final stages of this draft i really just felt like zirka tree gives me so so much offensive hitting power that this team just desperately desperately needs and i think it's going to be able to do so so much for me it's going to cause so many mismatches in team building and in kind of making predictions because obviously so many teams are going to want to bring their ground types are going to have the skarmory in the back i'm going to be able to energy ball which is which is going to be able to do a whole heck of a lot to a lot of resistances so yeah i believe that i can make a circuitry that's going to push for ko leader towards uh, the the end of the season i think that kind of circuitry is kind of a mon to build around this kind of circuitry high dragon combo are definitely mons to kind of build an entire slow bro uh, momentum core around and uh with that i'm going to get into a next mon, which is chandelure now chandelure okay so chandelure is a really fantastic mon i have used it in doubles draft and i kind of think chandelure is fantastic right so chandelure is really really strong like not too too far away from zirkatree right obviously zirkatree is a monster but this thing is not too far away it has again that fantastic speed tiering for being able to scarf and being able to get a lot of big damage off its type combination is fantastic it can be specs it can do a whole lot for me especially when it's being teleported into from a slow bro i think slow bro makes this mon so so much better and it has so few switches in and especially if i can manage those switches in and especially because i think it can break for circuitry right I, I think that a strong fire type was going to be really really strong to pair up with circuitry obviously for being able to break for each other right circuitry is going to be able to break waters and whatever fire type in this case chandelure is going to be able to break grasses for circuitry and i really think that these two just fit so so well together and it was a really difficult decision right because i honestly kind of wanted darmanitan in this slot and i think the only reason why i didn't pick darmanitan and i, I don't know it's debatable maybe darmanitan would have been the quote-unquote better pick here i'm not too, too sure yet but my only apprehension was i i drafted darmanitan so recently in the ubl and i really enjoyed using darmanitan i thought it was a lot of fun i'm not too too sure how good i was with it but really did enjoy it and I think it might have been a better pick here i'm not too too sure still but this is just one of those instances where i just used it i want to use something new i've never used chandelure and it was here and i wanted to have fun with it and, and i think again this is just made so much better in a kind of slow bro meta right that i'm trying to construct here but again on this kind of semi wheel here we will be picking up the need queen and now uh there are things here to be concerned about right i am picking up quite a number of ground weaknesses but i, I do have a, a number of ground immunities but this is 100 just me thinking about the kinds of things that i kind of need to cover for obviously right so obviously i need to protect my slow bro a little bit right so this is going to be kind of an optimal tabu coco answer right nido queen has been one of the top top coco answers since coco was introduced right and i just think that it does really really well as a bulky mon to kind of deal with electric types i think it gives me a lot of hazard control and toxic spikes is going to be huge toxic spikes with circuitry could be nutty i think it gives me a lot of support that my team needs i have used needle queen in the past and i've really enjoyed using it i think it has a lot of potential here and again just in terms of kind of building out what this team looks like i think i'm building out a team that can do a lot just kind of in how they interact with each other and with that i'm going to get into the next wheel so again a ton of picks have gone by and i end up picking up the sofali here now i'm starting to look at my team and I'm, I'm not necessarily seeing team holes i'm seeing a little bit of a lack of speed and potentially a kind of lack of momentum and kind of overall hitting power now my goal with Sovali, right i've drafted Sovali in the past a couple times but my goal with Sovali here is to not force it to be in kind of defensive situations where i, I kind of need a defensive typing and i just kind of build out max max special defense on this because i need a fear of resist or whatever the case may be right that is unfortunately how i have used savali in the past but i'm going to count it as a failure every time that i have to bring in this as a particular typing that i need to resist and just 
a really especially defensive set. I want to build my Sovalis and kind of unleash Sovali to kind of be really offensive, to kind of bring Swords Dance sets. I've really never brought a Swords Dance Sovali set. I want to be able to do that more. I want to spam multi attacks. I want to play Sovali really, really offensively, obviously with a lot of momentum between parting shot and potentially U turn. But I think Sovali is a mon that I have kind of not used to the best of my abilities but this is a season where i'm really going to prioritize being able to use it offensively being able to use it to kind of put it in a position where it can sweep or, or at the very least even if it doesn't sweep to kind of open up the doors for chandelure for zerka tree for other mons especially again in a slow row meta where this thing all it has to do is open up certain mons and zerka tree could really do the rest here or chandelure could do the rest here or whatever the case may be. But I really do think that Sovali has a lot of potential that I've traditionally not used too well. But my goals for Sovali this time around are very different. And I'm really hoping to kind of use it well in this season. Now, next, I'm going back to a really old, old favorite. I love Tauros so much. I think Tauros is a fantastic mon. It's obviously going to now be my fastest mon, which is not ideal. But again, um, I think the goal here is very similar to Sovali where I don't think people really appreciate how strong Sheer Force Life Orb Body Slam from a Tauros is because it is so so strong it can deal dense into most teams and again the goal for this kind of latter part of my draft is just kind of opening the door up for Zerka Tree because I have decided that I'm building around Zerka Tree I'm building around Chandelure uh, as my main kind of breakers and I really need other breakers to kind of complement them and kind of be able to allow Slowbro to teleport into, into certain mons and just do what they need to do and close out weeks on their own, right? That's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I think Toros absolutely fill, fits that bill so, so well. And even its special kind of coverage, right? It gets access to moves like Ice Beam and Flamethrower, where with Sheer Force and Life Orb, right? They're very, very respectable moves against a 4x weakness. Like if somebody builds out a really physically defensive Ferrothorn, being able to catch that off guard with flamethrower be able to two a ko it that's huge right if i can catch them into kind of clicking hazards against toros thinking they have free turns i can defog those away later i can get two flamethrowers off and i can really put that that ferrothorn in a bad spot this thing gets access to a lot of kind of sleeper great moves like megahorn it can kind of break grass for circuitry it can kind of just do a lot that i needed to do this thing just has such good just general breaking capacity because for a lot of teams, normal spam is going to just be fantastic for me. It's going to be just really spammable breaking ability that is just going to open up a lot of what I need my team to do. And now with the Tauros pick, I will be going into the Lorantis. Now, uh, here for with Lorantis, I really desperately needed a grass type. Um, grass types were not uh, in high quantity at this stage. Um, part of me thought that I could get Serena at some point. But this does a lot of what I need to do, right? So basically what I need from, from Lorantis is the occasional defog to be able to switch into to certain types because i because my slowbro might need some some help switching into uh, to electric attacks being able to switch into grass type attacks and then from there even being able to get free turns to defog being able to get free turns to toxic being able to, to set up the, the rest of my team just as a support mon it can get off an, an aromatherapy if i need it right it can do a lot of support things that i need it to do and a lot of teams are not going to be are not going to be in a position to kind of set, set up in front of this thing because they have to respect the superpower they have to respect the leaf storm because of contrary and they have to kind of respect lorantis's breaking ability and who knows this thing might end up breaking a, a few times for my circuitry it might just be supporting most of the time but regardless i think lorantis is going to have a lot to do i think it's going to have a lot of roles that it can fill and i think lorantis is really strong for a generic grass type i don't think this format really has great great grass types but like i said lorantis can just do what it needs to do and support the rest of my team and with that this is going to be the final pick this is going to be my tier five right so so i should note those last four that skarmory need queen so lorantis those are all between like t tier two to three uh lorantis to tier four so i'm yet to get my tier five but i'm saving it for last and i am still missing a fairy type as you can tell but i'm trying to think of what else i could really do here there weren't many solid tier 5 fairies i'll have to admit but i really do believe in car bank here now let me talk about car bank right now obviously car bank can do a decent amount right it can set up rocks it can set up screens it can um 
it can set up screens and explode if I really want to do that. But one thing that I want to kind of prove about Carbank, right, is I think rock fairy typing is fantastic typing. But I think a lot of people are fine picking up a Diancie. And Diancie has basically the same stat line total as Carbank. I, I almost did pick up Diancie in tier 4, but I, but I ultimately couldn't afford it. And Carbank in tier 5 is a budget Diancie that just doesn't have the same attack and special attack but the rest of the stat line is identical and that kind of attack defense stat line is less important in a body press meta right so I think this is a mod that gets so much better with with body press and it's funny because uh, a lot of people in in the draft when the draft was happening were talking about uh how bar steel types were and I was saying like dude everyone's just sleeping on uh, registeel because i think registeel is fantastic and everybody agreed that registeel just gets so so much better with the inclusion of body press and it got picked really really quickly after i kind of brought it up and, and people were, were agreeing that registeel is really looking fantastic here and carbink has the exact same defense as registeel right so carbink and registeel have the exact same base power body presses coming out i believe it even has a stronger body press than skarmory out here so uh this i believe has the strongest body press on my team in fact and it can just do a whole lot for me if it comes down to a position where body press can kind of close out a game it can be a fantastic switch into things even just getting chip damage off on certain things i think it can kind of serve a really really fantastic role here and that is going to be the end of my team i think this it's a really really interesting team i really want to see how well it kind of competes here i think i accomplished a lot of what i wanted to do going into the draft i mean go, going into the draft really all i wanted was slow bro and circuitry that's really all that i wanted and i feel like i built around it very very decently well i think a lot of these other pieces here at the potential to just kind of win on their own i think a lot of the other pieces here are just really really strong i think these pieces here can open up the door really really well to a zirkatry sweep to a potential chandelure sweep and i think that's ultimately going to be how a lot of the season goes for me just having a lot of breaking power that opens up a late game for the mons that i'm trying to build around whatever week it happens to be and i think i can have a lot of fun with the season these pieces together just look really really fun to me i'm gonna really enjoy clicking buttons i'm gonna really enjoy kind of building with this team and that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with uh our first couple weeks and like i said i think i'm just gonna try to have as much fun with it as i possibly can uh i'm really excited about it stay tuned this will be in a playlist that i'm gonna try to put together and once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll be once again out